if there is a split in the Conservative Party, and I think one is coming, um, it's difficult to tell precisely how large the, the, the different sides of it would be. Um, but if that group were, were to embrace a reversing Brexit agenda, it would actually get a lot of support. It would get a lot of support from its traditional, the traditional Conservative business constituency. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust, and I shall be talking today, continuing my dialogue with John Stevens, the um, chair of the Federal Trust, uh, about the Brexit debate in the United Kingdom. Uh, earlier this week, Keir Starmer went to Brussels and uh, met the president of the European Commission. The outcome of this meeting was predictably meagre. Uh, there was a reminder that the trade and cooperation agreement is the um, basis for future relations between the UK and, and the United uh, uh, and the European Union. Um, and uh, a group is to be set up to consider possible areas of mutually beneficial interest that might lead to agreement in the future. Uh, it's clear that Starmer is pursuing a very, very cautious policy on, on, on the European front. Uh, and we're going to be discussing today, I, I will be discussing with John, um, what the implications of this are for the uh, other parties in the political um, landscape of the United Kingdom, particularly for the Conservative Party um, and for reform. Uh, John, we've just had a, a party conference of the Conservative Party and the uh, leadership candidates have put forward their views, um, including on Europe, although not principally on just on Europe. Um, does it matter who is elected leader of the Conservative Party for the party's uh, attitude to Europe? Does it indeed matter at all who becomes leader of the Conservative Party? Well, it does matter because the principal barrier to Keir Starmer moving in a pro-European direction, and for that matter, the Liberal Democrats moving in a pro-European direction, and actually addressing the issue of Brexit and the problems it has given to Britain, um, is the fear of a, a pro-Brexit bloc being able to essentially uh, challenge and uh, prevent such a move. Um, and this is this bloc is composed of the Conservative Party primarily, but also increasingly reform. And the question really is whether the Conservatives and reform can constitute such a bloc in the future or not. Did anything that the leadership candidates had to say or the general mood of the conf conference um, throw any light on the likelihood of such a bloc being formed? Well, the curious thing about the, the conference was that uh, no one was really talking about Brexit specifically. I mean, indeed, Brexit, of course, is a, is a, a taboo subject still right across the British political spectrum. What they were talking about was immigration principally and the challenge from reform and how they deal with reform. And related to that are uh, a sense that they need to apologize for what the last government did in failing to address the immigration issue. And they would say failing to address some other traditional conservative issues like lowering taxes or reducing the state. And there was also um, uh, discussions of uh, the net zero issue and um, some anti-woke stuff, but um, in essence, it, they were dominated by this question of how do they relate to reform and uh, who is best equipped to, as they see it, uh, reunite the, the right uh, in order to uh, create and sustain uh, an anti-European uh, bloc. Well, if that's a motivating force behind many people in the Conservative Party casting their vote, um, doesn't it seem pretty evident that um, over the next three or four years, some sort of Brexit bloc will be established between uh, reform and the Conservative Party? Well, what is also curious about this conference is that uh, reform was only mentioned in terms of the fact that the policy agenda that all four candidates were more or less presenting is essentially the same as that of reform. But when asked, would you actually favour a merger with reform or even an electoral alliance with reform? Or would you, another way of putting this, welcome Nigel Farage into the Conservative Party? Um, all the leaders expressed opposition to that. 
it was only on the fringes. It was actually only Jacob Rees-Mogg who was peddling the idea that the only thing that needed to happen uh, for the Conservatives to revive is that they should uh, essentially merge with reform. But uh, a Conservative Party conference may, uh, at the beginning of uh, a new parliament, when the party is still under the impression of substantial defeat, um, may not be a predictor for the way things are going to, to work out over the next two or three years. Um, do you foresee, for instance, defections from the Conservative Party to, to reform over the coming months and years? Well, I think it's very important to understand what Nigel Farage and reform is and what it's trying to achieve. What it is now is essentially uh, endeavouring to recreate the coalition that gave us Brexit, the 2016 referendum coalition, which was between essentially Singapore on Thames, uh, ultra uh, liberal capitalists, um, the new emerging ultra rich ruling class, as some people would put it, um, and the the left behind, the um, nativist um, English nationalist, essentially working class. I mean, that was the coalition that gave us Brexit. And Farage is endeavouring to put that together. And he is supported in this by some very powerful forces um, who previously uh, financed a large part of the of the Brexit campaign in the referendum, um, and who retain a very substantial influence in the Conservative leading press. Is it uh, possible to imagine such a coalition lasting or being a stable one? Um, we can understand that it happened uh, over Brexit because it was a, an issue on which there was a great deal of ignorance and, um, and a misunderstanding. There had been a, a propaganda war against the European Union for 20 years, um, and that just carried through to 2019, um, uh, helped by the fact that Corbyn was so unpopular and so un incredible a candidate for being prime minister. Is that a is that a, a, a constituency in electoral coalition that can be reconstituted on any stable basis? Well, obviously, as we saw in the post Brexit period of the conservative last conservative government, um, it is in in government not sustainable because it is uh, totally contradictory. But in opposition, it is sustainable. And that, I think, is the problem. Um, and it has very powerful forces behind it. Uh, and F Farage does not want to do a deal with the Conservative Party. He believes that the Conservative Party is a broken brand. And he thinks that he can essentially take over the Conservative Party, destroy it indeed. Um, and he has a plan to do this. Um, um, and is he condemned to fail in that? And when you say destroy the Conservative Party, uh, of course, a, a lot of people who are in the Conservative Party at the moment uh, would feel perfectly well at home in reform. Not everybody, but perhaps even a majority of Conservative members would take that view, particularly if there had been a period of time when the argument had been developed that the only way of, of maintaining Conservative values, and in particular keeping Brexit safe, um, is, to, is to merge with reform. It might even be under the name, under the banner of the Conservative Party, um, but essentially dominated by reform personalities. Well, it is certainly true that what um, Farage is aiming for is a takeover of the Conservative Party, but he believes the brand is broken. And uh, the strategy to do that is to prove that the Conservative Party is finished. Uh, I don't think whoever wins this leadership election um, to, to re succeed uh, Sunak um, will probably not survive. He may not even survive uh, a couple of years, because what um, reform is seeking to do is firstly build up an activity in local government and then target uh, the forthcoming elections for the Scottish Parliament and for the Welsh Assembly, uh, both on under semi-proportional systems, which would be advantageous to them. And they have the, the real possibility of, of effectively destroying the Conservative Party, both in Scotland and in Wales. And I think if that were to happen, that could be the trigger that would uh, bring about um, a collapse of the Conservative Party with a, a substantial portion of it probably defecting to reform and the rump being scattered between the Liberal Democrats and, and the Labour Party in some form or other. That is what he wishes to see. And he has, as I say, two very powerful elements behind him. He has the finance and the backing of 
the conservative media uh, and some of the new entries. I mean, GB News, obviously, uh, The Spectator has now been bought by the owner of uh, GB News or one of the owners of GB News. Um, Michael Gove is uh, the editor there. He was the handler and the, the link between the official Leave campaign and Nigel Farage during the 2016 referendum. And one looks at the attitude taken by the mail and the telegraph, what may happen to the telegraph, who, who ends up buying that. I mean, this is a very powerful combination with a lot of finance behind it. So you can imagine circumstances in which there is a, a more united Brexit front um, in British politics than was the case at the last general election. Um, well, what would be the implications of that for the next general election? Well, I think before that, we have to see the nature of this threat, how serious it is, because at the moment, the assumption is that um, you know, Farage has only got five seats. Um, the Labour Party has an enormous majority. Um, th th this is uh, the, the stability of not talking about Brexit is one which actually helps the Labour Party and indeed the Liberal Democrats, because uh, the growing unpopularity of, of Brexit is... Um, a, a constant albatross around the neck of the Conservative Party. But um, that may not be the case if uh, the Labour Party gets into any serious difficulties, economic difficulties particularly. And on top of this, what we've not mentioned is, um, which is a very immediate <laughs> issue, of course, is what happens in the American elections. Because I think if we're, one was to have a Trump victory in America, this would dramatically increase the position of Nigel Farage in British politics because he because of his links to, to Trump. So I think there is a very serious threat here of a powerful um, pro-Brexit bloc. And that, I think, is what Starmer is really worried about. I can see understand the possibility of that. But I don't think that its association with Trump would necessarily be politically advantageous to it in this country. Trump is a very, very negative figure, not just uh, on the um, on the left of British politics, but universally throughout all British politics. It would be a, a, a brush with which to, to tar um, uh, Farage if he were seen as being too close to Trump. Well, it, it might do, um, but it might not, because he might be promising... Um, trade deals with American things to replace uh, your, the, the European option. I mean, we must remember that the, Euro, the European debate in Britain has, to a very large degree over a very long period, been, uh, in some respects, a choice between an American option for Britain and a, a European one. So although it, Trump is unquestionably a, a very divisive figure, and even more the issue of whether we are closer to America or closer to Europe is an even more divisive issue in our politics, that doesn't mean to say that this won't polarise and define the next general election. Um, and this is this is the block. I mean, be, we're wondering why we have this very strange phenomenon in our politics that a clear majority of people now believe that Brexit was a mistake, but no one is prepared to do anything about it. And th this is the, uh, the strange situation. Um, and the question is, you know, why is this? What is the, what is the, the, the block to addressing the Brexit question? And uh, I think that what, what needs to uh, emerge, what we need to hang on to, is this underlying fact that Brexit is unpopular now with the British public, and that is not likely to change. Mm -hmm. the, the, there is no circumstances, I can imagine, in which uh, people will suddenly start saying, well, Brexit was a tremendous success. Um, it is a, a, a draining away of support for Brexit is the real problem that both Reform and the Conservative Party have. But unless that draining away is uh, addressed and exploited, unless uh, the Brexit case is attacked directly, then the plan that Farage has and his allies have of creating a bloc that is permanent, and even perhaps, I mean, it's they don't need to get into power to prevent us from rejoining the EU. They simply need to be a major force. And that is what they are endeavouring to create from the ashes of this Conservative defeat. Yeah, and you think that that in 2028, 2029 is a realistic prospect that there will be a, a cohesive and powerful and uh, menacing um, 
pro-Brexit bloc. What, what will Starmer's reaction be to that? What will the Labour Party's reaction be to that? Will they be able to defeat it comfortably or uh, ca carrying on the rather cautious path they've uh, adopted up till now? Or, or will they be vulnerable? Look, look, this is the question. The only way in which they can deal with this threat is to attack it head on. They have to make the case that Brexit was a great error which needs to be reversed. They can't ignore it, they can't park it, and they can't rely on Brexit keeping the Conservative Party and, and reform divided or keeping them unpopular. They need to exploit the fact that the whole trend of public opinion in Britain is against Brexit. And that is going to increase with time because the, the problems created by Brexit are not going to go away and they're going to be constant reminders of how Brexit has been a mistake. But uh, they can't just sit tight and uh, look in the other direction or address other issues and pretend that, that, that um, the threat posed by reform in particular um, is not a serious one. You talked about the possibility of uh, probably a majority of Conservative MPs joining reform or associating with them in some in some way um, and fragmentation of the rest um, among other parties. Um, is there any possibility, do you think, of a, a, of a cohesive um, a breakaway from the Conservative Party, which would form in the relatively near future uh, a fraction within the, the within Parliament and would uh, be able to enjoy the publicity and the prestige of, of being 40? or 50 former Conservative MPs acting together? Well, there is that possibility. Um, I mean, the other great irony of the current situation is that the one party that now has a vested interest in saying that Brexit was a monumental mistake and indeed apologising for it, for their role in it, is actually the what was the mainstream Conservative Party. Because Brexit has totally destroyed the conservative credibility on for business, for economic um, sound management. Um, it has uh, destroyed the Conservative Party. If there is a split in the Conservative Party, and I think one is coming, um, it's difficult to tell precisely how large the, the, the different sides of it would be. Um, but if that group were, were to embrace a reversing Brexit agenda, it would actually get a lot of support. It would get a lot of support from its traditional, from the traditional conservative business constituency. It would also get a lot of support in all those seats which it lost to the Liberal Democrats in the southeast of England, and uh, the seats that it's lost to the Labour Party in metropolitan, um, more prosperous um, constituencies. And it would uh, have a real chance of constituting a serious opposition to a Labour Party that at the moment is dragging its feet on this issue. Uh, and it would transform the position of British politics. But the chances of this, it has to be said at the moment, do not look high. And therefore, the chances of Farage creating a serious block to reversing Brexit is very real. When I talk to continental friends about some, the chance of something not being high, they always accuse me of English understatement. Um, I think I'd agree that, that that's a, 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 a carefully phrased way of putting it. Uh, it hasn't happened up till now that there's been this breakaway. Um, and indeed, there were there were good opportunities um, during the Brexit debate, before Brexit, uh, for such a, a breakaway to occur. Um, mm. Why are the chances higher now, even if they're low? Well, it is because of this significant majority already indicating that they think Brexit was a mistake. And and the, the rather lesser number, but nevertheless growing, uh, particularly in, the, in business interests, who want actually concrete steps taken to reverse it. That's the opportunity. <laughs> yes, that's a, it's a peculiar irony for the Conservative Party. <laughs> Uh, it's faced with with the real chance of extinction if it pursues its present path, um, but uh, an alternative path will be will be very difficult given its present constitution and, and membership and the present um, support which it has or the the urgings which it has at its back uh, from from the Eurosceptic press, the Eurosceptic the, media. In the Conservative Party is now playing for its life. I mean, that's the one thing that is different from. Uh, 
um, all the previous times when there were discussions about a split in the Conservative Party, particularly on the European issue. I mean, and until this last general election, the whole notion that you know we're essentially in a two-party system, that um, you you stick to the to to your party, um, that splitting is a is a political death. I mean that. All of that no longer applies. I mean, the, the establishment of, of, of reform um, has disproved that. And there is no question now that the, the very existence of the Conservative Party is at stake. Uh, and if, if, if Farage succeeds, he will have totally transformed the basic nature of British politics, the nature of the British right. And I... Deeply da deep down, I don't believe that Britain, which is a conservative country, not a radical right country, um, w will not accept that. Very good. Uh, very good conclusion on which to finish. I, I hope uh, our viewers have found this uh, debate interesting. And there are many similar discussions on the Federal Trust website. Thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you, John. And, and goodbye to you all.